Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where obvious answers mean nothing and obscure answers mean everything. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> now, welcome back, Paul and Eddie. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the Pointless final and this is your second chance. Remind us what happened. Well, on the first round, we was OK. Myself and Eddie both got a pointless answer each on the first round. And on the second round, he knows it right yeah, up. Yeah, I got it right wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but double pointless, though. Yeah. In the first round, yeah, it was all, oh, it was all well. glory for Paul and Eddie. It was. That's right. Yeah. Oh. And uh, let the down side down terribly. Yeah. Well, never mind. Now, Paul, what do you hope is going to come up this afternoon? What, on the questions? I'd well, like... mainly on the questions, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not, modern history would be nice. Mm -hmm. Modern history, um, Formula One, maybe sports. And Eddie, what about you? I'm more into older history, if there's such a category, more than modern history. I and think there is. Yeah, <laughs> really. Right, from um, Rome, Romans up to, say, medieval time, I love all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, very best of luck, Paul and Eddie. It's great Thank to you have you much. here. Thank uh, you. And let's hope we see more of you this time. Mm. And next, we welcome Lynn and Dudley. Now, how do you two know each other? We met through the internet, uh, Alexander. You met through the internet? Uh, yes. What do you... Uh, to, to do what? To... to Go out with each other or to... Yes. Oh, I see. Good. Phew. Yeah. Where have you come from, Lynn? Uh, we've come down from Lancashire. We both live in Lancashire now. Whereabouts in Lancashire? Oh, Lancashire now. So you're, yeah. you're new to Lancashire? Well, no, I've been there about 20 years, but I originate from Yorkshire. And Dudley, how about you? When did you, when did you move to Lancashire? Uh, I moved to Lancaster in 1988. And from your, from your accent, of course, I can hear you're Canadian. I was born and bred in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> in Glasgow. Yeah. Dudley, what do you do? Um, I work in the pro shop at uh, Golf and Country Club in, uh, in just outside Ormskirk. Very good. Are you, are you quite a golfer yourself? Yes, I, I play. Is that <laughs> what it... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Beautiful Scots understatement there. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. What sort of handicap do you play off, Dudley? 18. 18. Yeah. Right, sure. See, I asked, that's a question you asked. It sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Have no idea. <laughs> what do you do, Lynn? I work as a nurse clinician in a general practice in Skelmersdale. Very good, very good. Um, Lynn, what would you like to see come up this afternoon? Well, strong subjects, really, probably science, because of my job and everything. Yeah. So anything sort of medical, biological uh, sciences... OK. Um, ..I'd be very, very happy with. And how about you, Dudley? Uh, geography and Scottish history. Well, great to have you on the show, Lynn and Dudley. Welcome. And next, we welcome back Benali and Freya. You were on the show last time as well. Remind us what happened to you. We, um, <laughs> we didn't do too brilliantly. We went out in the first round. But I think we were very unlucky. There was an inordinate amount of pointless answers. I tell you what, that <laughs> was an historic first round, wasn't it? Yeah, we had five pointless answers in one round on the last show. And the category was trousers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, no, it was a fun round, that, though, wasn't it? It was good. It was inventive. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, now, Benali, what would you like to come up? Well, a bit of geography. Um, <laughs> well, you're not a fan, but uh, politics, foreign languages, food. I think that those kind of subjects that would be great to come up. Um, or if you could do questions I've seen again on the previous shows, that'd be great as well. That'd be handy. <laughs> OK. Freya, anything for you? I think, yeah, I think we've got some crossovers. We're both, um, for me, especially British politics. Yeah. Um, food would be great. Geography, I am. Um, Definitely not so keen on. Yeah, geography. <laughs> what are you talking about, Banani? Geography? I'd really like literature. Yes. Especially kind of slightly older literature. OK. Um, that would be brilliant. <laughs> well, it's great to have you back on the show. Very, very best of luck this afternoon. And finally, we welcome Wendy and Alison. Now, how do you two know each other? Well, uh, as sisters, we've known each other forever. But my first real memory of Alison is when we used to live in America and she got a brand new bicycle and I still had a tricycle and I couldn't keep up. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Tricycle. Oh, I had to have a tricycle forever. I'd old, I had an older brother and older sister. It was, it was, it was impossible. Um, now, where are you now? You, you grew up in America. Where do you live now? Well, we were only in America for a couple of years. Then we lived in Switzerland, then we lived in Germany, then we moved to England. Then we said goodbye to the parents because they moved to Belgium and then they moved to Holland. And... <laughs> so you followed them everywhere until they went to Belgium. <laughs> and then and that we was both moved said... abroad. So right. we've both spent most of our adult lives abroad. Uh, I was in Germany and Alison was in Holland. So you are your career expatriates? Well, you could put it that way. Um, Alison, what do you do? Uh, I'm an exam invigilator. Are you? So we hand out the papers and collect them in at the end, um, trying to make sure nobody... Uh... 
See, when... Looks over the shoulder of anybody else. When we were at school, basically people would do that and then as soon as the exam started, they would just get out a book and read it. Or they would mark other exams. You're not allowed to do that now, we're are you? We're not allowed to do that anymore. You can't do anything? No, we can't do... Um, we've seen a couple of sketches... I don't know what you're talking with, about. ..with um, <laughs> some characters called Armstrong and Miller and uh, we don't do what they do in their sketches More's the pity, I bet you wish you could. <laughs> I, yes, it would be quite fun, but yeah. I couldn't do a handstand anyway. Mm. <laughs> so what would you like to see come up, Alison, this afternoon? Um, maybe some maths or some geography, cos we've lived in these different countries in Europe. Bit so of European geography would be good. Sense. Yep. European geography would be good, yep. Very good indeed. Well, fingers crossed those will all come up this afternoon. Best of luck to you. We'll find out more about all of you as the show goes on. There's only one person left for me to introduce. He once beat the Delphic Oracle in a pub quiz. And then she thrashed him at Connect Four. He is my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hiya. Afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Are you well? I'd say I was. Oh, yes, how are you? That is terrific news. I'm very well as well. well. That is good news. Looking forward to the show. We've got two returning pairs. Neither of them did amazingly last time, but I think they're, I think they're pretty good. Paul and Eddie and uh, Benali and Freya. But the first question, uh, I think, is going to be good news for Lynn and Dudley. I think it's good news for Wendy and Alison. I think it's good news for Benali and it's bad news for Freya. <laughs> question one. Will it Freya? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you are I, well today. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. um, well, thank you very much, Richard. We put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. Now, what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Gwyn and Matt won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. <laughs> Right, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so try and make sure that's not you. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points, so try and avoid those. OK, our first category this afternoon is... America. America. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many US states ending in A as they could. US states ending in A, Richard. Yeah, nothing to add here, just any states of the USA whose name ends in an A, please, and see how many of them you can get at home as well. OK, now then, Paul and Eddie, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first. So we are looking for US states ending in A. Well, I'm going to think of a couple. But the one that comes to mind, which I think a lot of people forget about, is Alaska. Alaska. You think it's an overlooked state? Yeah. I Very so. good. It's too well, far north. Let's, this, I'll, I'll tell them that. Uh, let's hope you're right. Let's see, is Alaska right? And if it is, how many people said Alaska? <laughs> 40. <laughs> 40 for Alaska. Yeah, it's the most northerly, the most westerly and the most easterly parts of the USA all in Alaska. It's got more coastline than the rest of the United States combined as well. Very well done. Now, Dudley. Dudley, US states ending in A. Well, I too can think of a number, but <clears throat> which, which ones would be low on the scoreboard? I think I will go with South Carolina. South Carolina. Very good. Sounds good to me. Let's hope that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said South Carolina. <laughs> Down it goes. Almost into single figures, down to ten for South Carolina, Richard. Yeah, well played Dudley, a uh, very safe start. It's got an A at the end. It'd be called South Carolyn if it didn't, that's how you can tell. Very <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Freya. Yeah. Freya. Um... Is this is tough? A, well, yeah, it's a bit embarrassing, cos I'm actually studying American studies. 
Um, at the same time, my geography is appalling, so I'm not going to risk too much because I think Benali will be quite good at this. Um, I'm going to go with North Carolina. <laughs> OK, we had South Carolina. Here's North Carolina. <laughs> See what you've done there. Uh, let's see if it's right in how many people said North Carolina. Okay, well done. Ten for the South. Twelve for North. That's a pretty good score, Richard. Twelve for North Carolina. Yeah, well played, Freya. Got two more points than South Carolina. They won't like that in South Carolina, will they? No. That's not but that does mean two people went to North Carolina. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> no, I've got nothing else. So remember, we're looking for US states that end in A. Alison. I'm going to go for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, you're saying. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Pennsylvania. Richard. Yeah, that's a great answer, Alison. It's the site of the Battle of Gettysburg, all sorts of other things. It's where they invented the pencil, <laughs> all sorts of things. Yep, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Well, Alison and Wendy looking very strong. Lovely low score of three there, then up to ten for Dudley and Lynn, up to twelve for Freya and Benali, and then way up to Eddie and Paul's high score of 40. Who'd have thought you'd be so far ahead? Oh, no one to remember Alaska. With, uh, with Alaska, yeah. OK, well, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> very good. Remember, we are looking for US states ending in A. Now, Wendy, the high score is a Paul and Eddie on 40. If you can score 36 or less with this answer, you are through to the next round. I'm going to say West Virginia. West Virginia. Very good indeed. There's your red line. If West Virginia gets you below that red line, you are definitely in the next round. Let's see if West Virginia is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said West Virginia. It's right. Very well done. Down it goes to five. Cracking answer. Takes your total up to lovely single figure total of eight. Richard. Yeah, well played, Wendy. Very good start to your pointless careers uh, there. I can't hear West Virginia without singing Country Rose by John Denver in my head. That's can't the one. do it. <laughs> I just saw I literally saw it at the start of the round on the bit of paper and I've been like trying not to whistle it. <laughs> I'm gonna silently be singing that for the rest of the round. <laughs> you you all enjoy yourselves. OK, then, Benali, the high scorers are still Paul and Eddie on 40. You're on 12, which means 27 or less is enough to ensure you a place in the next round. Well, that's the second game in a row someone's taught me answer before I was going to say it, so oh, I'll have to think of another one. That's but um, there's a few going around my head. Um, what I think I'm going to go for is North Dakota. North Dakota. There's your red line. Let's see if North Dakota gets you below that red line. Is it right? If it is, how many people said North Dakota? You've done it. Eight for North Dakota. Splendid score. Takes the total up to a nice round 20. North Dakota, Richard. Uh, yeah, well played, Benali. Safely through round one this time round. So we are looking for US states that end in the letter A. Lynn, you're on 10. Paul and Eddie on 40. 29 or less is enough to get you through to the next round. Right. Well, I think there's quite a lot of states ending in A. I'm trying to think of a really obscure one. A couple of them that I've thought of have already been and gone, so um, I'm going to go for Iowa. Iowa. There's your red line. If Iowa gets you below that red line, we say goodbye to Paul and Eddie at the end of this round. You are through to the next round. Iowa, is it right? How many people said it? It's right. Yes, you've done it. 16 for Iowa. That takes your total up to 26. Richard. Yeah, very well played, Lynn. Although when you said Iowa, I thought, no, no, it ends in an I. But it, it doesn't. <laughs> Stop singing John Denver. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> it's really concentrating. Yeah. <laughs> now then, Paul, the writing is on the wall, I'm afraid it certainly to say. Is, isn't it? You yeah. haven't given your answer yet. No. Already, I'm afraid, you're the high scorers. Well, the one, the one I was thinking of is gone, the last one. So geography's not my good point, spelling's not my good point, so I'll go for California. How am I doing with that one? 
Ah, it's good, it's good. I think it's good. Um, I'm afraid there's no red line for you. Why not? I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm oh, afraid. Oh, go on, just put one in at the top, even. Just for us. Just Your for red us. line's down there. I'm right down there. Lower oh. down than our tower reaches, I'm afraid. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. California, for fun. Is it right? How many people said it? Oh, 62. <laughs> That's another high score there. It takes your total up to 102. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, I'm lucky, Paul. It's uh, the most popular state in America, California, and a very popular answer here as well. There's no point this answer's here, because uh, I think a lot of people at home do know their states. There's 21 correct answers, though. Let's take a look at the ones that would have been the best scorers. Nebraska was the best scorer of all, would have scored you two points. Now, Bernardi said North Dakota. South Dakota would have scored you three. There's Pennsylvania, we had that from Allison. Other low scorers, Indiana, Minnesota, Louisiana, those are all fairly low scorers. But let's take a look at the three highest scorers. Paul and Eddie look away now. Uh, there's Alaska, 40 points, the third highest yeah. scorer. Alabama, 53, and uh, the tiny little state of California, tucked away on the coast, 62 points. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is Paul and Eddie. Oh, oh. oh this, this is this is the this is the show's yeah. loss. Consistent. Yeah. Well, you are consistent. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, no. You, if you were truly consistent, you'd have scored a double pointless in this round, First, and, then, and then and then gone out in a blaze of glory in, in round two. Yeah. Um, it's tough, that. Yep. Oh, Never mind. It's, well, it's the game, isn't it? Well, it, it is, I'm afraid. I'm yep. afraid it's always the luck of the draw, but um, we, you've been such good fun on both shows you've been on. I'm really sorry we have to say goodbye to you so soon. Anyway, Paul and Eddie, brilliant contestants. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, there's only going to be room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one of the teams in front of me will be leaving us at the end of this round. OK, our category for round two is... Film. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, our round two question concerns film villains and their films. Film villains and their films, Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you six villains on each pass. We asked 100 people to tell us the names of the films that they appeared in. If you give us a nice, obscure answer, you'll score fewer points. If you give us an incorrect answer, though, you're going to score 100 points. It's going to be 12 in all for you to get at home. Very best of luck. Some of these characters would have appeared in a series of films. If that's the case, give us the name of the series or, or any of the films in it. That's fine. OK, thank you very much. So, we are looking for the films in which these film villains first appeared. And here is our first list. We have John Doe, Gordon Gecko, The Child Catcher, Harry Lyme, Freddy Krueger and Dr Evil. Here we go again. John Doe, Gordon Gecko, The Child Catcher, Harry Lyme, Freddy Krueger and Dr Evil. Dudley, we come to you. You've got me on this one, Alex. Oh dear, <laughs> have we? Um, I think I'll go with Harry Lyme. And the third man. The third man, you say. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. The third man. It's right. Very, very well done. Ten points. A very good answer there. The third man. Yeah, well done, Dudley. Very low score there. Uh, from 1949, the third man. And Orson Welles, of course, played Harry Lyon. Now then, Benali. Right. Well, I think I know three answers, but I'm a bit worried that they're the more obvious ones. Mm. And I'm not sure which is the least obvious. Mm. But I think I'm going to go for Freddy Krueger. Yep. And that's Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street, says Banali for Freddy Krueger. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Yep, that's right. 58. 58. Mm. Yeah, pretty big score. Uh, played by Robert England, of course. 1984 was the first one. He did eight of them in all. That first really? film, Johnny, Johnny Depp's first ever film. That's the right. The original Nightmare on Elm Street. First, and also, first one, really, really scary. Yeah, really scary. And then They're all quite scary. Less scary once you've seen it, mate. Oh, I, so I, I'm, I'm not good with scary films. I still find them scary. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street 6, yeah, I can take or leave, but the rest... <laughs> There we are. Alison, you're the last person to have this board. You can talk us through all of these villains, should you wish. 
Well, there's not many of them I recognise. I can hear my sons screaming at me now, Mum! But um, I'm going to go for the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Child catcher, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. The child catcher, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> 44. <laughs> 44 for the child catcher. Yeah, often considered one of the scariest villains of all time, The Child Catcher, mm. based on an Ian Fleming novel, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, written by Roald Dahl, the film. Mm. Do you want to fill in the rest of this board? Do you want to have a go, Dr Evil? It's either... So either it's either Team America or Austin Powers or... Yeah. Austin Powers, Austin exactly Powers. right, would have scored you 73 points. Gordon Gecko? Uh, Wall Street. It's from Wall Street, yeah, would have scored you 19. And John Doe is actually the best answer on the board, so well done if you got this at home. Any idea? Played no. by Kevin Spacey. Seven. In seven, exactly right. A terrifying film. Would, would have scored you five points. That very well done if you got that. OK, let's take a look at the scores as they stand halfway through the round. Well, Dudley and Lynn, the best score by a margin at this stage. Lovely score of ten. Then up to 44 for Alison and Wendy. Then up to 58 for Benali and Freya. So, yes, it's going to be a tussle between Freya and Wendy as to who stays and who goes at the end of the round. Very best of luck, all of you. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put six more villains up on the board, and here they are. We've got Cyrus the Virus Grissom, Ming the Merciless, Alex Forrest, Darth Vader, Captain Barbossa and Lex Luthor. I'll read all of those again. Cyrus the Virus Grissom, Ming the Merciless, Alex Forrest, Darth Vader, Captain Barbossa and Lex Luthor. Now, remember, we are looking for the films in which these villains first appeared. And obviously, you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Wendy. The high scorers are Freya and Benali on 58. If you can score 13 or less, you are definitely through to the next round. Well, I was very glad I didn't have the last board because I didn't know anything. Um, I do know a couple on this one, but I can't decide which is going to be the least popular. I think I'm going to go for Lex Luthor and Superman. Lex Luthor, Superman, you are saying. Here's your red line. Should you get below that red line, you are definitely in the head-to-head. -head. Lex Luthor, Superman. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that. It's right. Ooh, it's a popular one, Wendy. 61 for Lex Luthor and Superman. Takes your total up to 105. Yeah, played by Gene Hackman in the 1978 film. Do you know who played him in the 2006 Superman Returns? Kevin Spacey. OK, now then, Freya. Yes. Remember, we're looking for the films in which these villains first made an appearance. You're on 58. The high scorers are now Wendy and Alison on 105. If you can score 46 or less, through you go to the head-to-head. -head. Yeah, I only know two of them, and the one that I think is going to score less is Captain... Barbossa, who's from the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Captain Barbossa, Pirates of the Caribbean, you're saying. Here is your red line. Quite high up. Mm. But Captain Barbossa, Pirates of the Caribbean, very best of luck. Is it right? How many people said it? You've done it. You have done it. Very, very well done. 40. Brings your total up to 98. You are in the head-to-head. -head. Richard? Yeah, Captain Barbosa. I think it's Captain Barbosa, isn't it? Barbosa. I've never seen it. Uh, yeah, Captain Barbosa, played by Geoffrey Rush, of course, in the, the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Now then, Lynn. The high scorers are Wendy and Alison on 105. You're on 10, which means if you can score 94 or less, you are through to the next round. Do I play it safe? Um... No, I'm going to go with Ming the Merciless, Flash Gordon. Ming the Merciless, Flash Gordon, you're saying. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. There's your red line. If Ming the Merciless can get you below that red line, you are in the head-to-head. -head. Best of luck. Yes, you've done it. Very well done, Lynn. Wow, 14. Only 14 for Ming the Merciless takes your total up to 24, the lowest score of the round. Richard. Yeah, very, very well played, Lynn. Uh, safe and sound into the next round. Were you thinking of saying Darth Vader? Was that going to yes. be your safe option? If you had, you would have just tied with Wendy and Alison. Right. I thought, Darth I thought Vader, a lot of people would get that. Star Wars would have scored 95 points. 95 points. Uh, Xander, what do you think about the other two? Cyrus the Virus, I remember. 
It's Connor, isn't it? It is Connor, yeah. It was, uh, what just called you? Seven points. And Alex Forrest, I think, is a very, a very tricky answer. Um, I can't remember. Very, that. very famous uh, villain. Villainess, in fact. Uh, would have scored you two points. Very well done if you said Fatal Attraction. Yes. Alex Forrest is the, is the Glenn Close character in that film. Two points, best answer on the board. Well, thank you very much. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid it's Wendy and Alison. Dear, oh dear. Yes, they were, they were tough boards, those, weren't they? They were. And the child catcher, of course, just such, a, such an enduring villain. Of course, no one, no one really forgets the child catcher going to be a high score. So, yes, I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you. Now, when you come back next time, which, of course, you shall, what will be, be the tactics you're going to bring to bear you've learnt from this first experience? It's just a matter of luck whether I know the answer or not, so just go for it. I guess that's right. Well, there we are. Um, well, lovely having you on the show. We will look forward to seeing you again next time, and I hope you'll go even further. Thank Thanks, you. Wendy and Alison. Great conversation. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. Well done, Lynn and Dudley, Benali and Freya. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. <laughs> now, for each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many gases with a single letter chemical symbol as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any of the four elements on the periodic table that are represented by a single letter chemical symbol and are also a gas. There's just four of them. By gas, we mean something that is gas at room temperature and at sea level. Very best of luck at home getting all four. Thank you very much. Now then, Lynn and Dudley, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. OK, we have an answer. We have. Now, Lynn, you said earlier that science would be a, a good subject for you. Is this, is, that, is this the right sort of area of science? It is, but I've got a little bit of a mental block at the moment. So, yeah. Um, but I think we've, we've got an answer. Dudley's going to give that. OK, Dudley, you've been handed the answer. I have indeed. <laughs> we're, going, we're going to go with hydrogen. Hydrogen. That wasn't what I said. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> OK, hydrogen. Hydrogen. Benali and Freya, you can now confer out loud if you need to. So, I mean, we had hydrogen. Yeah. Uh, there's oxygen as well. Um, nitrogen. Um, we're not sure of the fourth one, so obviously we're not going to give that one. Uh, <laughs> so it's between oxygen and nitrogen. I think and nitrogen. Yeah, I think we're going to go for nitrogen. Nitrogen. OK, we have hydrogen, we have nitrogen. Lynn and Dudley went with hydrogen. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said hydrogen. It is right. 31. 31 for hydrogen. Lynn, can I ask, what was the answer you told Dudley to give? Nitrogen. <laughs> <laughs> but he never listens to me, so... <laughs> Benali and Freya went with... Nitrogen. So, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see if it beats hydrogen. Yep, it does. Look at that. 22. <laughs> Very well done. Nitrogen wins it for you, which means after only one question, Benali and Freya are ahead 1-0. Richard? Dudley is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I can just hear in the ear going up the M6 now. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, so, we've already heard three of the four. Uh, there is a fourth, though, and the fourth one is a pointless answer. Very well done at home if you said fluorine. Fluorine, which is F, uh, was pointless. Nitrogen, N22. Hydrogen, H31. And oxygen, O38. Very well done if you got all four, but especially if you got fluorine. Thanks very much, Richard. Here is your second question. Lynn and Dudley, most especially Dudley, <laughs> you have to win this question to stay in the game slash alive. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many top-flight winning football managers as they could. Top-flight winning football managers. 
Yeah, we're looking for any manager who has successfully managed a team to win the top flight of English football since the 1980-81 season, please. By top flight, we mean the Premiership from 1992 onwards, and it was the first division before that. So anyone from 80-81 all the way through to the 2010-2011 season, please. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Benali and Freya, you go first this time. Yeah, yeah. So... Freya's left I have me. to say, yeah. I'm useless here, so, so Benali's taking this all on <laughs> his shoulders. So I'm going to go for a bit of a risky one and go for Graeme Souness. Graeme Souness, you're saying? OK. Uh, Lynn and Dudley. Well, I'm the, I'm the same boat as Freya on this one. I know nothing about football whatsoever, so this is Dudley's question. If he gets it wrong, it's going to be his fault. <laughs> OK. Again. <laughs> Sam uh, Allardyce. Sam Allardyce, says Dudley. So we have Graham Souness and we have Sam Allardyce. OK, in the order they were given, Benali and Freya have gone with Graham Souness. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Graham Souness. Bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. Now then, Lynn and Dudley, this is the question you have to win. All you have to be is correct at this stage. It doesn't matter what it scores. Sam Allardyce, you say? Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Sam Allardyce. Oh, oh, both wrong. So, after two questions, <laughs> Benali and Freya remain ahead. 1-0. Richard. I'm getting more and more concerned for Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> it's safety. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Allardyce never really been a, a big enough club to win, uh, win the Premiership, neither Souness. Let's take a look at all the, the men who have done it. Howard Kendall won it twice with Everton. He would have scored you one point. Ron Saunders won it with Aston Villa, two. Joe Fagan, Liverpool, two. George Graham, Arsenal a couple of times, two. Howard Wilkinson won the very last First Division. Would have scored you three points, won it with Leeds. Bob Paisley of Liverpool won six league titles. Would have scored you five. Carlo Ancelotti won in uh, 2010 with Chelsea, 14. Marino won it twice with Chelsea, 24. Dal Gleish uh, won it with Liverpool and Blackburn Rovers, 31. Arsene Wenger has won it three times, 31. And Alex Ferguson, 73, has won it 12 times with Man United. Well, thank you very much. Here is your third question. Again, Lynn and Dudley, you have to win this question to stay in the game. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many names in book titles of the New Testament as they could. Names in book titles of the New Testament. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any given name, i.e. The, the name of a person, in any of the full titles of any of the books of the New Testament in the King James Version, please. Thank you very much indeed. Lynn and Dudley, you go first, obviously, this time. Go for that. Mm. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. So then, Lynn and Dudley, what are you going to go for? The Acts of the Apostles. Acts. Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. OK. Acts. Benali and Freya. Well, we assumed when you said names, you meant proper names as in... So we were between Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Um, oh, right. Uh, I, so, yeah. Matthew. Matthew. Okay, Matthew. Um, <laughs> Lynn and Dudley have gone for acts. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said acts. Yeah, bad luck. Which means, Bernardi and Freya, all you need is to be correct and you are through to the final. Let's see if you are correct with Matthew. Yes, you are. Well done. You've done it. For what it's worth, it was 47. But all it had to be was correct, and it was, which means after three questions, Benali and Freya, you're through to the final 2-0. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Dudley and Lynn just didn't listen, I think, to the, uh, yeah, the explanation. I hope that wasn't your fault, Dudley. I hope that was Lynn's no, fault. That was my fault, that one. Yes. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. That's an equaliser, Dudley. That's right. That, that is a happy ending. Uh, let's take a look at all the correct answers. There's two pointless ones here. Uh, Titus, as in the, uh, the epistle to Titus, uh, that was pointless. Philemon, also pointless. Very well done if you got either of those. Timothy would have scored you one point, as would Jude. Peter and Paul, both six. James, 11, and there's the four Gospels at the top. Mark, 43. Uh, don't look that up. Matthew, 47. Luke, 47. And John, 53. Thanks very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Lynn and Dudley. That was tough. There was one answer which was misheard and might have won you a point. But even had you won that, you had two incorrect answers with Sam Allardyce and Acts of the Apostles, I'm afraid. So you can comfort yourselves.
It wasn't hang hanging on that anyway. <laughs> um, but on nitrogen. I tell you what, the good news is you will be back next time and we'll look forward to seeing you then. But meanwhile, Lynn and Dudley have been great contestants. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. But for Benali and Freya, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £1,000. Very well done, Benali and Freya. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,000. There it is. The rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we haven't had any pointless answers on the show today. You only have to find one, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options. They are 20th century dramatists, celebrities, classical music. Well, I'm guessing we can rule out classical music. Well, I Unless did, you have I hidden did, talents that I don't know about. I did choose SC music, but otherwise, you know, no, because no. <laughs> so, oh. well, if you do 20th century dramatists, it's going to be you on your it's own. Gonna... <laughs> I will not be any help. Celebrities, I think, will be in the middle for both of us. Yeah. But dramatists, it's, you know, if you feel I'm confident not in it. Hugely confident on that at all. No. I could, you know, give a guess, but maybe if we could both give a guess yeah. on celebrities, yeah. yeah, it would be better to try that one. So, yeah. Kind of two half brains <laughs> compared to one. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, let's go for celebrities. Okay, celebrities. That's what you're going to go for. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many hosts of an audience with dot, 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 as they could. Richard? Yeah, looking for any person or fictional character who's presented at least one episode of ITV series an audience with since the first one in 1980 right through to March 2011. When it was presented by a group, we're looking for the name of the group rather than any individual within it. Very best of luck. There's a huge amount of names on this list. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers and all you need to win that £1,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. So it's basically any famous person for the last 20 years. Yeah, but... I have literally no idea. What, I've never... You don't need to have watched this. Okay, things like so... Girls Aloud, Shirley Bassey, Elton John had one, George okay. Michael, but slightly someone... Less... Slightly less yeah. famous. So did George Michael have one? I'm pretty that sure he did. Might be... Take that did one, but they're no. quite obvious. I like George Michael. So That's if you go. put George yeah. Michael's one, um, I think like... Um... What about comedians? Any... Um... Well, it, how about the, the, the guy who does the, the tribute act to like, you know, Canadian singer Michael Bublé. My, Michael Bublé did okay. one. Um, did Alan Bo like Ball? I've you know, literally you know, never heard of this. The so... musical drama. The musical drama guy. Uh, it's like Ball something. It's really Michael, annoying. Michael, Michael Ball. Ball. <laughs> Michael Ball. I bet, so I, unless you've got any more, like comedians, um, got twelve seconds. I'll go with those. That's fine. Sure? We might as well. You know. Okay. I, in, yeah. Okay. You're happy. <laughs> We'll stop the clock there. There we are. Your time is up. You have three answers. We were looking for people who've hosted an audience with. What are your three answers? So we've got Michael Ball. Michael Ball. George Michael. George Michael. And the other one was... Is Michael Bublé? Uh, Michael Bublé. All the Michaels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of those three, which do you think is your, your best shot at a pointless answer, your most obscure answer? I think Michael Ball. Michael Ball, yeah. Michael Ball, but Michael Ball last. Yeah. Probably Michael Bublé at the first. Yeah. yeah. Mickey Bubbles first. Yeah. <laughs> and George Michael. In the middle. Yeah. In the middle. Yeah. Probably where he'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put them up on the board in that order. And here they are. Michael Bublé. George Michael and Michael Ball. OK, we were looking for hosts of an audience with. You only have to find one pointless answer, remember, to win that £1,000 jackpot. OK, Michael Bublé is your first answer. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Good luck. OK, well, it's right. If this can go all the way down to zero, then you leave here with £1,000. And it goes into the 20s, into the teens. Oh, 12. Not bad at all. <laughs> not bad at all. 12, though. So, obviously, not a, not a pointless answer. <laughs> OK, you only have two more chances to win today's jack. But what would you do with 500 quid each? What would you do? Pay off some debts, maybe go abroad for a bit. Um, I want to go to the Edinburgh Festival. 
So towards a plane ticket, maybe some Very accommodation. Yeah. yeah. Also, you know, any remainder, probably student loan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, very good. Well, let's see if either of your remaining answers will win that for you. George Michael is your second answer. Let's see if it's right. If it is, let's see how many people said it. This has to be pointless, obviously, for you to win that £1,000. Ooh. Unfortunately, an incorrect answer, as it turns out. So not pointless, obviously, which means you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot of £1,000. This is your last answer, and the one you thought was your best shot at being pointless. Mm. Michael Ball. <sighs> Michael Ball. Everything is hanging on Michael Ball. It has to be right, and it has to be pointless. And if it is, you will leave here with £1,000. Let's see if it is right. Michael Ball. No, bad luck. I could have sworn he had done an audience <laughs> with, but there we are. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't go away with our jackpot of £1,000, which rolls over onto the next show. But you have been brilliant contestants. Thank you both so much for playing. You do, of course, get our pointless trophies. That's brilliant. the good news. Yeah. <laughs> Richard. Unlucky guys, both perfectly good answers. No, no George Michael, I'm afraid. Elton John's done one, Tom Jones has done one, Sir Cliff has done one, all sorts of people have. If you'd said take that, that also would have scored you 12 points as well. Let's take a look at the pointless ones though. Well done if you've got any of these at home. An audience with Alf Garnet, they did, that was pointless. An audience with Coronation Street, they did in 2006. Diana Ross, they did uh, an audience with. Donny and Marie Osman, my brother and sister, they were pointless. Jackie Mason, the US comedian, Joe Pasquale. Speaks very highly of you. <laughs> uh, they did an audience with Lennox Lewis. I can't believe I didn't tune in for that. Audience with Ricky Martin and an audience with Sooty. <laughs> yeah. They haven't done an audience with the Pope yet. I'd like to see that. That would be good. Yeah. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Uh, very well done if you've got any of those at home. Thanks very much. Richard, did you know any of those answers? No, I don't really feel cheated, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Benali and Freya, but it's been brilliant having you on both shows. You've been absolutely spectacular Thank contestants. You. Thanks so much. Brilliant. <laughs> Nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show, we will be playing for £2,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.